Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to the Rahu Jupiter conjunction video. We have this conjunction on in our skies from 22nd April to the 28th of November this year. I wrote about this conjunction in the quarterly newsletter that I do. By the way, if you are subscribed to the newsletter, apologies, I missed last quarter because I have been just super busy getting organized, coming back here, all of that, and doing lots of readings as well. Uh, but in the yearly outlook, I'll put on the screen actually what I wrote uh, in the newsletter. You'll be able to see that I had some thoughts about this conjunction in that year's yearly newsletter, the yearly outlook that I wrote on the 1st of January. And in that newsletter, I did talk about the fact that Rahu Jupiter is not one of my favorite combinations and that it can give rise to scammers and you know rogue teachers and people who want to lead you up the garden path and all this kind of thing right because we've got Rahu the rogue Jupiter the expert and I talked about this conjunction a little bit in the April episode where I mentioned that yes, this conjunction can give rise to great enlightenment and very enlightened beings. So people like Alan Watts, you know, Maria Montessori, and there are many others who have this combination in their chart and they go on to do and achieve incredible things. But when it's in the sky and when it's just an energy that's present for everybody, it can lead to things, and, and the, the word I used was stupidity. I said that, you know, really stupid things can happen at this time. Every day since I published the April video, I've been meaning to put together this Rahu Jupiter video, and it keeps being delayed. And I wonder why does it keep being delayed? And there have been a couple of things that have happened in the news just recently, just in the last couple of days, where I've been watching these things and I thought, ah, oh, that's Rahu Jupiter energy. Now I know why my video is so delayed and I've got time today. So today is the 19th. I'm recording this on the day before the eclipse. I will be editing the footage on the eclipse day, which I think is a very appropriate task. <clears throat> for an eclipse day, you know, to be editing, to be cutting up bits of uh, film, right? I've also put together the pick card that will be ready for Friday as well. But let's take a look at what's been happening in the news and what's been happening in the collective where I've been able to see this Rahu Jupiter energy. It's, it's starting to, you know, build up momentum. We're getting some news already. So I'll show you what those three news bits are and then I will jump straight into the outlook for each sign. All right, so let's take a look at the news. So I've got here Guru Chandal Yog in the collective, right? So Guru, which is Jupiter, and I'm going to say that Jupiter is intelligence. Okay, let's look at it as being intelligence. Mercury is also very much a planet of intelligence. I tend to think Mercury is a little bit more of the raw computational power, whereas Jupiter is the kind of intelligence that expands, it can see the big picture, it can join the dots. You know, the big picture thinkers, the really intelligent people, they're Jupiterians, aren't they? So I've got here Jupiter, which is intelligence, also wisdom. And Rahu. Now Rahu we can see as being trickster energy. Okay, so trickster energy, you know, uh, we can see Rahu wearing a mask, a facade, something not real, something fake, something artificial. Okay, so what do we have here? We've got artificial intelligence. And if you look at the media today, there is so much talk about artificial intelligence. It really is the big topic that is being hotly debated. And I think one of the stupid things, possibly, I'm going to use the word stupid, I don't like using it, but I'm using it. One of the stupid things that is happening with AI is the rush, the tremendous rush to get it out there. And I believe Microsoft, in their great haste 
to push their chat GPT system to the public. They got rid of their ethics department. And I think that that is a very stupid thing, but what can we do, right? That's what's happening. I just watched a 60 Minutes uh, segment where they interviewed the CEO of Google and yeah, it seems like they themselves have had to rush as well in order to get their AI offering to the market. So that is one of the kind of Rahu Jupiter, you know, things that I see going on. I've got here, this is the yoga where you think you're very clever, but you're possibly doing something quite stupid. Okay, and that's where I just think, why the rush? There shouldn't be any rush energy here. One of the saving graces that we do have with this Guru Chandal Yoga, this Rahu Jupiter Yoga, one of the great things that we have is while it's on, and I'm just going to double check this, while it's on, for the entire time that it's on, yes, this is good. We've got Saturn's aspect onto the conjunction. All right, and where is Saturn seated? Saturn is seated in Aquarius. So there is energy that is caring for humanity, that is thinking about humanity. I don't think that this thing is going to run amok and destroy all of us. And no, I, I don't, I really don't think that. But yeah, I, I can see why people are worried about this, concerned about this. I'm not excited by AI or any of this. You know, it's just not my kind of thing. I'm not into central banking, digital currencies or any of these things. But on the channel, when I talk about them and I say that these things are here or are coming, I'm just observing what is. I'm not stating what I want. What I want is for us all to meditate and grow our own vegetables. That's what I really want. But, you know, the world is not... Um, the world wants other things, doesn't it? Now, what are the other two things that have been happening in the news lately that made me think of the Rahu Jupiter energy? The next thing is what has been happening with the Dalai Lama. The Dalai Lama, of course, is a spiritual leader and he is a thoroughly innocent and wonderful man. Now, if you have been tuning into some Western media, not all, but some Western media, they believe that recently he has been doing inappropriate things with children, which is completely untrue. I will put a link below where you will be able to watch a really lovely gentleman explain what has happened recently with the Dalai Lama. I did watch the edited footage and I was puzzled and I thought, is this some kind of senior moment? I wasn't sure what it was. And what I did was I thought, gosh, I have to look at this because I, I didn't know what was going on. And I saw the edited footage first. I put in the Dalai Lama's chart details and I'll bring them up for you to see as well. I was pretty amazed because when I was watching the video and I just thought, well, this is an example of something stupid that's going on. I don't know what it is, but there's just some stupidity here. And when I put in his chart, I could see, oh, wow, look at that. He's got the Rahu Jupiter signature. He's got Rahu in, in Sagittarius, right? Look at that. That's a Rahu Jupiter signature. So I thought, wow, okay, so here we have this spiritual leader who's being painted as some kind of rogue Rahu type person or something like this and I had sent a clip to my mum and my mum immediately told me she's like look my intuition tells me there's something wrong with this she did some digging and she found the link below that I'm pointing you all to to see and what you have to do is you have to watch the whole footage not just the little edited part watch the whole footage and you will see that he has been, he's been badly done by it. And the stupid thing that's gone on in this episode, the stupidity is in some of the Western media 
personalities who have picked this up and just run with it and they're attacking the Dalai Lama now. So a couple of these people, JP Sears, he just picked it up, picked up badly edited footage and decided to make a video about it. And it's really, it's, it's a terrible video. And Megan Kelly, I saw her do this as well. And she had a real rant at the Dalai Lama and she was really angry. And that's what's stupid. We've got these media experts, okay, who have taken badly edited footage and they're creating a very firm opinion and giving that firm opinion out to their audience in a very decisive and firm way. They have not done their homework, right? And this is kind of touching on, I think what I'd written in the newsletter where I talked about, you know, there being problems with experts. And this is a time from April to November where you really want to do your homework. You really, really want to make sure that what you're saying is accurate. There will be a lot of false news, fake reports, and stupidity in the media, in the airwaves. And look at the poor Dalai Lama. He's had to suffer from this. He has this signature of Rahu and Jupiter in his birth chart. He's also got Jupiter lording his 10th house and his 7th house. And 7th house I do see as a key house for reputation, same as 10th house, right? And we've got Rahu here. Rahu is also foreign, things that are foreign. So this is something that foreigners didn't understand. They didn't understand the culture that he comes from and, and you know, what's acceptable in his part of the world. And they've just misjudged him. And we can see Rahu in the seventh house of, this is the seventh house of fame. And he has been misunderstood, uh, misrepresented. You know, it's, it's really sad. So, you know, I hope any of those of you out there, if perhaps you've watched some of what the Western media have said, please do look at the link I'm sharing below and just recognize that you know, he's, he's an innocent man. And the stupidity that's gone on here, the Rahu Jupiter stupidity that has gone on here is people jumping on a false bandwagon and just running with it without checking the facts. The other thing I wanted to talk about in the collective, which I saw on the news recently, was Elon Musk. I saw Elon Musk chatting with a BBC journalist. I watched the entire hour. <clears throat> and I also watched him chatting with Tucker Carlson. Uh, I watched that yesterday and I think they released part two today or something like that. So I got to watch that as well. Very interesting. I don't know what to make of Elon Musk. I have got a couple of great friends in Bali and I asked them, they are like my research team because they know, they're up to the minute, they know what's going on in the world. And the last time I spoke with them on Zoom, I asked them, Elon Musk, is he a good guy or is he a bad guy? Because I really don't know. And one of my friends said, well, I think he's red pilling a lot of people in that I think he's waking a lot of people up. And my other friend said, oh, I wouldn't trust him. She said, I think he's playing a double game. So that's just some opinions from other people. As I say, I don't know what to make of Elon Musk. But when I saw the segment in the BBC interview where the journalist is seated with Elon Musk and I think the journalist has criticized a feature in Twitter and he says something like, oh, well, I don't like feature or something like that. So Elon says, all right, well, give me an example. Give me an example of, I think it was something about what was sexist or what was, you know, whatever, something like that. I can't remember. Anyway, he's, he's grilling him. He's saying, give me an example. And the BBC interviewer is absolutely struggling. He just, he can't think for himself. And as I was watching it, it was funny because I've been thinking a lot about the Rahu-Jupiter conjunction. I started thinking about the ninth house and I thought how this BBC journalist came into the interview so pumped up 
with all this confidence and you know the weight of the BBC behind him he thinks I'm gonna get Elon Musk I've been authorized to go after this guy and make him look like a fool or make him look bad or, or whatever it is right again we've got another reputational thing going on here which is kind of interesting but the journalist and I'll link it below I'll link the small grab below so you can see what I'm talking about when Elon Musk asks him you know, okay, well, what's your opinion? What do you have to say? And it's incredible to watch this guy struggle. And what I learned about the ninth house in that moment of watching the journalist is how some people are operating on borrowed power or they're operating on secondhand power. So this guy's all puffed up on all this. I'm, at the, I'm from the BBC. I'm a real big shot. You know, I've got the whole BBC British Broadcasting Corporation behind me. I've got all that power. But in the face of a man who has his own power, how quickly he deflates and all that secondhand borrowed power just evaporates somehow. It's pretty incredible. And if we take a look at Elon Musk's chart, now I don't know if he's a good guy or a bad guy. I don't I from from April 22 to what is it November 28, I don't have any opinion on anyone because it's Rahu Jupiter. I don't know. I I can't have a proper opinion on anyone these days. But I want to I want to take a look at Elon because it's quite interesting. If we have a look at the 19th of April, we've got all of this power around his ninth house from the moon okay and that's what's really interesting to me the other thing that's really interesting to me is that jupiter is on a gandanta point uh gosh and if we have a look as well moon's on a gandanta point as well yes it's quite huge there moon is on the gandanta point today anyway not yesterday i suppose the interview would have been done maybe quite a few days ago but it's been released now it's quite interesting because I was thinking about how you know what is this concept of like when you look at the BBC journalist it's like all this like this and this is strange but I'll just tell you like all the steam went out his steam went out and this what is what got me thinking about the concept of esteem self-esteem where does self-esteem come from? It's really coming from the third house. That's our confidence. That's the air element. But where is the steam being generated, right? It's actually being generated from a Gandanta point, which we have active now. And Elon's got his Jupiter there on this Gandanta point. So he's very confident. He's full of self-esteem. We've got Jupiter on that Gandanta point. And it's water and fire, so that's what's doing the boiling. We've got the air element in the third house. That's the esteem. It's it's what I find so interesting about astrology is that, like phrases that we use in everyday conversation, are so astrologically, you know, correct. It's they're kind of um, they're just mirroring nature, you know, and yeah what i see here is i see <clears throat> a person who's who's in his power he's in his element okay the sun which is the lord of his moon is exalted at this time as well now is he looking out for the interests of humanity well over the next 2.5 years we could say he is uh, from this chart that is one of the things i'm seeing because then I started to look at his Saturn, which is sixth from the Ascendant, which is service and career. So he's having to serve what? Who is he serving? Well, he's serving. Saturn is opposite the moon. That's the house of the other. And what do we have in the house of the other? We have Aquarius. And Aquarius is the humanitarian. So I do see some positive energy here. Of someone who from what I see here for now <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to be bound to this but like you know I, I do see someone who I think is is operating for the good of humanity but I could be wrong okay so you know I'm just putting that out there I think one of you did say in the master's series 
please would you cover Elon Musk so I hope you're watching right now and yeah the reason I wouldn't cover him in the master series is because the master series is only people who have you know transitioned they've, do they've done the um the cosmic shuffle that's what i'm calling it these days all right guys i think we're good to begin the what are these things the mini reports if you would like to stick around you're very welcome uh oh by the way before i leave you it's 20 minutes we're okay i also want to say that um in the interview that elon musk did he talked about the fact that november is going to be a time where things could get really tight financially and that is astrological as well i also heard this point from neil mccoy ward neil mccoy ward is a bit of a truth teller on youtube i don't know how he's surviving but somehow he is i just saw another guy richard Vogues. oh i hope i can say his name i don't know i think i can but he's been taken off so yeah we got to be careful out here in youtube land we can't say too much but i've heard from a couple of places on youtube that november there will be quite a uh, and it could be a bit of a biting recession or a deep recession or some kind of recession some kind of quite financial and look neil mccoy ward says we're in recession now yeah i i think so um but these people are saying november onwards things economically financially are going to be quite tight and i think that that is in line with this rahu jupiter movement because when rahu moves out of the house and jupiter is alone saturn can and saturn is quite powerful so i think saturn will um at the moment there's a bit of a counterbalance rahu is another expansion energy jupiter is an expansion energy these are good but when rahu leaves saturn can really um yeah i don't know i it's it, winter could be quite wintry that i am seeing that i am seeing that all right so um it's just a good time if you can over these uh, across these months if you can save money for that winter period that would be a really good thing all right guys well we can begin the mini reports those of you who'd like to stick around please do we are now going to welcome aries aries welcome now this is suitable for aries moon and aries ascendant i would recommend watching too this time if you want to check your sun you can uh, i don't see any harm in doing that but definitely aries moon aries ascendant welcome now in the april overview i would have touched on the fact that jupiter is in aries in your first house that's from 22nd april to the 1st of may 2024 and when i'm taking a look at that i would have been talking about leadership leadership is in focus for you the universe is looking to you asking you what do you want to create now let's lay on top of that rahu and both rahu and jupiter aspects okay because both of them aspect your fifth and ninth houses so let's take a look at this all together now i've got the note here take extra care if you are in an advisory role this year if you're giving any form of advice do your homework check things thoroughly don't be overly uh invested in a particular opinion you know you might want to take your time i've got here be careful of rush energy i've also got your children your partner your subordinates so if you're in a career where you manage people uh, all of these people children partner or subordinates they could point out errors in what you are doing okay and gurus or mentors might also point out areas that need more work it's a good time possibly to have a guru or mentor uh, if you are a guru or mentor again just be extra rigorous extra careful in what you're saying how you're saying it think long term all that kind of stuff so this conjunction lasts until 28th november this year it is on for quite a while it's going to be exact on the 2nd of june so just take care a few days either side for aries 
that is what I have for you. Thank you so much for joining. We are now going to welcome Taurus. Taurus, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now this can be Taurus moon or ascendant. If you would like to look at your sun, you can, but really stick to two. This time moon and ascendant would be really good. Now in the April episode, I talked about how Jupiter is in Aries in your 12th house from the 22nd of April to the 1st of May, 2024. I talked about how this is going to expand you spiritually and you really can grow leaps and bounds spiritually across this time. What we're going to do now is we're going to add Rahu onto this. We're going to look at as well the aspects. Uh, both Rahu and Jupiter will cast aspects into your fourth and eighth houses. So with the aspect on the fourth house there, if you're moving house, be careful what the experts are telling you. I've got experts in quote marks there because are they experts? That's the thing. This year, if you're hiring an expert, you really want to make sure they're an expert. You really want to check them out, see if they've got a good long track record. Do they know what they're talking about? All that kind of thing. You don't want a rogue trader, you know, a rogue professor, right? That's what Jupiter the rogue, uh, no, Jupiter is not the rogue, Jupiter is the professor, but Rahu the rogue, Jupiter the professor, right? So I've got here, make sure you work with professionals who have a good long-term track record in real estate. Definitely, yeah. I mean, this could be a time where, you know, one of the things I'm concerned about with this conjunction is people just opening up shop. I'm brilliant at this, but then they've just, they've just got the energy of Rahu Jupiter in them for this year, and but they don't, they're not really committed. Um, I've got here, this could be a time where family members depend on you for guidance or counseling, okay, because you're going to be becoming very wise, very spiritual, all of that is expanding in your life spiritually. So you might find people depend on you for guidance. This could be a time where you really excel in your spiritual studies and some of your own occult gifts might come online at this time. And these could be fully formed occult gifts that are ready to go. You might have been honing them over past lifetimes. It's really incredible. This does happen to a lot of people and some of my clients have told me stories like this where yeah they've had these kind of whoosh moments where like they, they're going along like this and then whoosh over two years they just completely transform as a person. They used to be material and now they're very spiritual. I've had uh, quite a few clients come to me with with stories like this. So yeah, you could you could have some rapid acceleration at this time, Taurus. Now this conjunction lasts until the 28th of November. So this really is coloring the whole year and it goes exact on the 2nd of June. So just take care a few days either side of that day. But Taurus, I am wishing you well. Thank you so much for joining. We are now going to welcome Gemini. Gemini, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So now in the April episode, I would have talked about the fact that Jupiter is in Aries. For you, it's in your 11th house from the 22nd of April to the 1st of May, 2024. And for you, that's going to be all about leadership and communication. What we're going to do is we're going to add Rahu to this and we're going to have a look at the aspects. Both Jupiter and Rahu are casting aspects into your third and seventh houses. So be careful of miscommunication or misunderstandings between friends, between siblings, your partner and or your public. So say for example you're an author or you're a social media person or you know this kind of thing. If you've got a community of any kind you're definitely going to want to make sure that you are doing your homework, you're thoroughly investigating things, all right? So if you watch the intro, you would have seen some of the things I had to say recently about the Dalai Lama, you know, and some of the media people did not do their homework and they got the wrong end of the stick. So I think that's um, definitely important to do your homework in this instance. Now Rahu is in the third house. This is especially good for growing any social media platforms that you run, uh, it is a really good time to be putting forth your ideas. So please don't be put off by me, you know, saying, but I think it is a good message of take care, double check, all that kind of thing. And I do double check. See, today I just 
double checked my notes again just to make sure okay you know have I written everything is are all the dates correct and all that yeah I have to do a lot of double checking I'd love an editor but I don't have you know any um it's just me <laughs> I can't afford anyone or to hire anyone I would love that but yeah um got here don't be afraid to be in the spotlight but be constructive and I've got here if you stick to a higher purpose for example your work uplifts humanity you can't go wrong so Gemini definitely don't be put off or, or anything by some of the crazy things that are going to be going on in the media world from April to November uh, it can be easy to be put off actually because we can think oh gosh should I you know should I be contributing to all this but you, yes you definitely should Gemini because you are on the spiritual path and we need more and more and more spiritual content going out into the world we really do everybody who puts out spiritual things out there into the world that's, that's a really good thing we need it now the conjunction lasts until 28th november and it's exact on the 2nd of june so just take care or you can take note of it a few days either side of the 2nd of june gemini i'm excited for you especially for your rahu in the third that's outstanding you can really uh, create a lot and especially you can put out a lot of great content this year so i'm excited for you gemini all right, we are now going to welcome Cancer. Cancer, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So now in April, I talked about, oh, and by the way, this is Cancer Ascendant, Cancer Moon. You can look from your sun if you'd like to. Now, April, the April outlook, I talked about Jupiter in Aries in your 10th house from the 22nd of April through to the 1st of May, 2024. And for you, this is about career and material growth. So when we add Rahu on top, of what's going on here and we look at the aspects that both Rahu and Jupiter are casting in your chart they're going to cast aspect into your second and sixth houses so you might be feeling especially ambitious and confident and that's good that's a good thing wealth will accumulate this year okay so definitely use from April to November to build up your savings that's going to be really important uh, because when let me just double check your one I've got cancer moon in front of me yeah oh okay I see all right this one doesn't quite apply it applies to Pisces more that's okay there was another idea that popped into my mind but no that's not for you uh, wealth will accumulate this year yes it will you should be able to build up savings and wealth Jupiter is definitely going to be casting aspect into that second house of yours for like a whole year so that's good that's that will continue uh, i'm really happy about that i've got here it's good as well if you are competing against others do take care in legal cases though because jupiter sometimes expands issues in the sixth and rahu energy is going into the sixth as well rahu really wants to win but Jupiter might pick up an issue uh, and expand some problems. So if there is a legal case that you're dealing with from April to November, take care in that regard. I've got here advice here is don't aim for a win or aim for success at any cost. Consider people around you before making moves. Empathy is going to be important. And I've got here your energy might not be the strongest at times so not for the whole thing but it's this I'm mainly saying this because Jupiter is in the sixth and you've got Saturn in the eighth so at times you might just feel the energy is not there or it's not present so yeah take take extra care don't push it and you will intuitively know when those times are now the conjunction lasts until 28 November and it goes exact on the 2nd of June so you might want to be more mindful of this guidance uh, a few days either side of the 2nd of June Cancer I want to thank you so much for joining and we are now going to welcome Leo 
Leo, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now this is Leo Ascendant or Leo Moon. You can look from the sun if you would like to. Now in the April episode that I recently did, I talked about Jupiter in Aries, which for you is in your ninth house. That's from the 22nd of April to the 1st of May 2024. So I would have talked about the fact that you are massively empowered to direct the course of your life at this time. It's very exciting. Now, if we overlay Rahu onto this and we look at the aspects of both Rahu and Jupiter, what do we see? Well, we've got these aspects being cast into your fifth and first houses. So I have the note here, take care of overestimating what you can achieve this year. It's a tough one because on the one hand, I'm saying, I'm building you up, saying you're really empowered to create whatever it is that you want. But then I'm also saying, be sensible and, and don't overestimate what you can achieve. I've got here, your mind might output more ideas than you can physically achieve. I really relate to that generally being a, I'm a human design projector. I don't have energy, <laughs> right? So I have no energy, but I keep getting ideas. So yeah, I, I, that's, that line is kind of my life, but you might experience that really across April to November of this year where you're quite on fire when it comes to your mind and your ideas and all this kind of thing, but physically outputting, uh, this could be a little bit challenging. I just want to have a look at your, yeah, your Saturn is there in the seventh from your moon. Okay. It could be a bit hard to get everything done that you want to get done. I've got here as well. Also take extra care if you're traveling this year as well. Choice is your biggest creative tool. And I've got here, be careful if you are getting advice from experts this year, either for your health or for your finances. So if you're hiring someone to advise you on your health, just make sure they have a good track record, make sure they come highly recommended, all that kind of thing. As well, if you're gonna appoint an expert to take care of your finances. Again, you don't wanna have a rogue trader or someone, you wanna have a good long-term, someone who's been doing it for a long term, all that kind of thing. Or someone, let's say they're new. I'm not saying that new people can't start businesses, but they can, but you know, you'll, you'll know, you'll have an intuition about this. I've got here, spiritual advice and, and or guidance would be good for you this year. So it is good to get advice or guidance on spiritual matters. Uh, it's a number seven year and a number seven year definitely you know, spiritual practitioners of all kinds are having a very good year this year. It's a good year to explore that side of yourself if you haven't already. Now the conjunction lasts until the 28th of November and it goes exact on the 2nd of June. So you might wanna bear this guidance in mind, particularly around the 2nd of June there. But Leo, I wanna thank you so much for tuning in and we are now gonna welcome Virgo. Virgo, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Virgo Ascendant or Virgo Moon. If you would like to look from your sun, you can. Uh, now in the April episode, I talked about the fact that Jupiter is in Aries in your eighth house. This is from the 22nd of April to the 1st of May, 2024. And I said, be careful of weight gain, be careful of debt, but spiritually you're going to grow so much and you're going to become even more enlightened than you already are. It's a really amazing time. So Jupiter's doing some great work for you there. Now, if we add Rahu onto this and we take a look at the aspects that both Rahu and Jupiter are casting into your 12th and 4th houses, I would say take extra care if you are moving, if you're using experts or professionals, you know, maybe you're using real estate agents or mortgage brokers or these kind of people, um, make sure they have a very good track record or that they've been doing it for a long time, or they come highly recommended, something like that. I've got here, spiritually, you can expand and grow so much this year. This is really, truly profound for you. Uh, new occult gifts or talents could crack open for you during this transit. I have here, keep studying and keep meditating regularly if you can. And Saturn's third aspect could materialize a breakthrough for you, Virgo. Now this conjunction lasts until the 28th of November and it goes exact on the 2nd of June. So you might wanna bear this guidance in mind a few days either side of 2nd of June. 
But Virgo, I'm liking the look of what you have here. Thank you so much for joining. And we are now going to welcome Libra. Libra, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now this is Libra Ascendant or Libra Moon. You can look from your sun as well if you would like to. Now in the April video, I talked about how Jupiter is in Aries. Uh, that's in your seventh house from the 22nd of April to the 1st of May 2024. And I would have talked about the fact that across this entire time you will be a powerful communicator and that your work projects are set to grow this year. Now if we add Rahu to this as well and we take a look at the aspects onto your 11th and 3rd houses, Here's the guidance I have. I've got here, be careful in all of your communications, especially be careful in how you communicate with siblings, friends, your partner, those who you work with. Um, be careful with any advisors that you hire at this time. If you are an advisor yourself, take extra care. Um, you know, do your due diligence work, do your homework, make sure you're very thorough, you check, you double check things. Um, and take extra care when traveling as well. I've got here this year due to Rahu's aspect into your third house, you have an excellent can-do spirit. You might be quite creative or quite hands-on. Also, you've got Saturn there in the fifth. That's the creative element that's there. And of course, the hands-on element with the Rahu in the third. Put effort into your projects and they will deliver returns this year. Now the conjunction lasts until the 28th of November and it goes exact on the 2nd of June. So you might just want to bear this guidance in mind, especially around, you know, a few days either side of the 2nd of June. But Libra, that's what I have for you today. Thank you so much for tuning in. And we are now going to welcome Scorpio. Scorpio, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. I'm just checking the time. We're all good. Scorpio. Ascendant, Scorpio, Moon, you can look from your sun if you would like to. Uh, now in the April episode I talked about the fact that Jupiter is in Aries in your sixth house and this is from the 22nd of April to the 1st of May 2024. I would have said be careful of health challenges, look after your health, eat well, exercise, do all that good stuff. Now if we overlay Rahu onto this and we take a look at the aspects that Rahu and Jupiter are casting into your 10th and 2nd houses, I would say be extra careful when working with financial experts this year. Uh, also if you are working with health experts, anyone that you're consulting in either of these areas, got here hire people with long term excellent track records or people who come highly recommended, that kind of thing. Your wealth and savings can really be built up this year as well as your career. Be careful of long-term choices you make in these two areas. And I do believe that would be definitely long-term choices you make in regards to wealth, savings. Yes, so that's the big savings as well as your career, but also health as well. Your ambition might be running high. Take care in legal cases or in competition, if you're in competition with anyone. You might feel like you're in a winning mood, but Jupiter might uncover problems. Okay, so take extra care. And you, you feel like you're in a winning mood because of Rahu. Rahu is excited to be in the sixth, but Jupiter might be uncovering problems there. So take extra care. Now the conjunction lasts until the 28th of November and it goes exact on the 2nd of June. So you might want to just bear this guidance in mind around the 2nd of June. Scorpio, I want to thank you so much for tuning in. We are now going to welcome Sagittarius. Sagittarius, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now this is Sagittarius Ascendant or Sagittarius Moon. You can look from your sun as well if you would like to. Now in the April episode, I would have mentioned that Jupiter is in Aries in your fifth house. This is from the 22nd of April to the 1st of May 2024. And I would have talked about the fact that you are going to be particularly empowered to lead and that, you know, the living flame has come to you. The universe is looking to you. You get to decide what it is that you want to do. 
Now if we add Rahu onto this and we look at the aspects that both Rahu and Jupiter are casting into your ninth and first houses, what do we have here? So I would say be extra careful of gurus or who you choose as a teacher at this time. If you hire any expert, especially someone who is looking after your health, make sure that this person has a good track record or that they come highly recommended to you. Now you yourself may be called upon as an expert or to lead at this time. I've got here, be conservative and long-term in your approach. Be considered, be measured, and definitely be wary of any get rich quick schemes as well. Uh, make sure you invest money for the long term. Now this conjunction lasts until the 28th of November. It goes exact on the 2nd of June. So bear this guidance in mind, especially a few days around either side of 2nd of June. Sagittarius, thank you so much for joining. And we are now going to welcome Capricorn. Capricorn, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Capricorn Ascendant or Capricorn Moon. You can look up your sun as well if you would like to. So now in the April episode, I would have talked about the fact that Jupiter is in Aries in your fourth house. That's from the 22nd of April to the 1st of May 2024. This is all about improving your home or where you live or considering things deeper about your home. This is also about becoming more spiritual, becoming more enlightened. This really could be a, quite a profound time for you Capricorn. Now if we add Rahu to this and we take a look at the aspects into both your 8th and 12th houses, what do we have? So I'm going to say be careful if you are traveling for a getaway at any stage. This is from April to November of this year. Um, maybe you want a little escape from the daily grind. Of course, definitely do that, but just take extra care. If you're going to consult a healer or person to work on your energy field, uh, make sure they have a good track record or they come to you highly recommended. You yourself may have some spiritual gifts that crack open for you during this transit. These are fully formed gifts, perhaps from past lifetimes. Uh, it, or it could be that your intuition heightens or you know some spiritual thing that you have been working on for many years that improves at this time. Maybe you make some headway. It's worth disciplining your diet and doing meditation at this time if you can. I do strongly recommend that. You can really profit spiritually across this time of April to November. So this conjunction lasts until the 28th of November. It goes exact on the 2nd of June and definitely be careful a few days either side uh, of the 2nd of June or, or just bear this particular guidance in mind especially around the 2nd of June. Capricorn thank you so much for joining and we are now going to welcome Aquarius. Aquarius welcome thank you so much for joining. So this is Aquarius moon or Aquarius ascendant. You can look from your sun as well if you would like to. Now in the last episode, the April episode, I talked about how Jupiter is in Aries in your third house. This is from the 22nd of April to the 1st of May 2024. So what we've got here is you're going to be massively empowered to speak up at this time Aquarius. This is you know social media, this is the courage to speak up, this is your presence in the world expanding, you being seen more. Uh, so this is pretty amazing. Now if we add Rahu to this Jupiter and we take a look at the aspects that both are casting into your 7th and 11th houses, I would say be extra careful with what you say especially on social media. I need to adhere to this one too. I tell you what, I mean, I have to adhere to that all the time anyway, <laughs> whether this conjunction is on or not, you know, I have to um, be, yes, very mindful. But anyway, especially now we've got Rahu Jupiter in the sky, you know, so, uh, but yes, especially on social media, definitely if you're chatting with siblings, friends, your partner, okay, the person that you love, your sweetheart, Go ahead, do your homework and make sure you're taking a long-term view, you know, with your opinions, with your ideas. Try to think about as many people as possible. Try to think from as many perspectives as possible, you know, um, cultural perspectives, all that kind of thing. 
Now, your courage to speak up and go for justice is expanding at this time. Okay, now we need the Aquarians in the world. I tell you what, I mean, this is your time, Aquarius. And um, gosh, we need Aquarian energy. Like we need everybody's Aquarius to be just amped up to the full, don't we? Yes, your courage to speak up and go for justice is expanding at this time. Saturn is in your first house. It is important for you to talk about what is right for humanity at this time. You could even find yourself leading a protest movement at this time. Isn't that incredible? Your speech is going to be particularly powerful, Aquarius. So make use of that. This conjunction lasts until the 28th of November and it goes exact on the 2nd of June. So you might want to be particularly mindful of this advice a few days either side of the 2nd of June. I'm wishing you well, Aquarius. Take care. And we are now going to welcome Pisces. Pisces, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So now this is Pisces, Ascendant, Pisces, Moon. You can look from your sun if you would like to. Now in the last April episode, I talked about how Jupiter is in Aries in your second house. This is from the 22nd of April to the 1st of May, 2024. This is where I would have talked about the fact that your savings and finances are set to expand, which is really great as Saturn is 12 from your moon. This is quite significant if, if we're talking from the moon because Saturn 12 from the moon is casting aspect uh, you know, three places away. The aspect is hitting your second house of savings and it tends to erode people's savings at this time. So I'm very glad Jupiter and Rahu are there blocking that erosion energy okay so i've got here yeah november well we'll talk about that in a moment I'll, I'll start with this let's so we've got we've got jupiter there in your second house okay so let's add rahu on top of that and we're going to take a look at the aspects that both of these are casting into your sixth and tenth houses so when it comes to work career you know it, Building your finances is basically really important at this time. Rahu and Jupiter are serving you very well. Yes, this is where I've got the note. Rahu and Jupiter are serving you very well by being in your second house because Jupiter is in your 12th. His third aspect can rinse your second house. Okay, but thankfully you've got some protection through to November. So what I would say is use the time from April to November to really save some money because I have heard, and if you didn't watch the introduction, uh, towards the very end of the introduction, I talked about the fact that Elon Musk and a guy called Neil McCoy Ward, both of them were saying that there could be quite a bit of a recession uh, that, that start, they're saying November onwards. And astrologically, when I look at this, it makes sense because Rahu's going to leave Jupiter and Jupiter is going to be alone and Saturn is going to be ca casting aspect uh, onto Jupiter. It's going to be difficult for people to expand, okay, because Jupiter is such a key expansion energy and we've got a, a larger contraction energy coming onto it because I say larger because Saturn is in his own multricone Aquarius sign. He's powerful there, right? So, and Jupiter is not so powerful. So, yeah, what I'm seeing here is that November of this year onwards, it will be important for you to protect your savings. OK, but what I'm definitely saying is from April to November, save. OK, and be ready for November. You want to be conservative. You want to conserve your energy. You don't want to do as much. You want to conserve your money, all that kind of thing. Yeah, I've got here. Be diligent. Start saving now because November onwards, things could get a bit tight. Um, yeah but i've got here as well be in a success mindset you've got this and you do pisces you're a phenomenal sign you know you you represent the all is one you are pisceans are great i wish i had some proper piscean energy in my chart you know um i think pisces people are great because they are some of the most tuned in people because you are the all is one so you know that's just natural for you now this conjunction lasts until the 28th of november so definitely you you are one of the benef benefactors you're, you're getting the benefit of rahu jupiter kind of in that savings and finances area you've got some expansion energy growing that 
across April to November. So work with that. I've also got here, um, this conjunction goes exact on the 2nd of June. So you, wanna, you might want to be mindful of this advice a few days either side of the 2nd of June. But that is what I have here today for everyone with the Rahu Jupiter conjunction. I hope this has been a good overview for everyone and for anyone who has watched the whole video, thank you so much. And I'm hoping to put more content out. Uh, I think next week I have the monthly to do and then I should be able to get back to some more creative content as well. I have so many ideas for things that I want to do and it's just about getting the time but I feel like I'm starting to get more organized now. You should start to see hopefully more content and perhaps um, a bit more on time type content as well. This video is a little bit on the late side but I can see why with the, with the recent news that has cropped up. I've been able to witness Rahu Jupiter in real life. It's been really quite amazing. So yeah, thank you so much for tuning in and I look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you.